They're as cold as ice. They're willing to sacrifice. Today, we're pitting together two queens of ice born into powerful, if troubled, families. Weiss Snee, heiress to the Snee Dust Company and member of the Huntress Team Ruby. And Mitsuru Kirijo, heiress to the Kirijo Group and member of the Persona Wielding Sea. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. The world of Remnant is known for many things. The vicious creatures called Grimm, the hunters and huntresses committed to fighting them, and the Schnee family. Yeah, they're kind of like royalty, and their princess is Weiss Schnee. As the heiress to the family company, she grew up in a pretty cold home. Pun intended. The Schnee family expected a lot from Weiss. It was considered essential that she live up to their highly influential name. Too bad for them, she had her own plans. Rejecting her father's wishes to remain at home, Weiss left to attend Beacon Academy and train to become a huntress, literally putting the W in Team Ruby. Within just a year, Weiss established her own name for herself, saving the kingdom on more than one occasion and doing so with her trusty blade, Myrtanaster. And that's McHugh. Merc Nasty here is a multi-action rapier with a three-foot-long blade. But guess what? It's also a gun! Instead of a plain old crossguard, it's got a six-slot revolver-style chamber that Weiss fills with bullets colored like the rainbow. Well, they're not exactly bullets. They are vials of dust, which she can fire to enhance her weapon and skills. Ironically, the Schnee Dust Company is by far one of the largest producers and exporters of dust. Wait, wait, wait. They sell dust? I got a ton of that shit covering the bookshelf in my trailer. I can sell it and finally have enough money to buy a second bookshelf. Just farm, here I come. No, not that kind of dust. In the world of Remnant, dust is an energy source, often used to fuel vehicles, androids, and weapons. Wait, you have books? When did I say anything about books? Well, long story short, there are four main types of dust. Air, lightning, fire, and water. And Weiss likes to mix water and air together for her favorite, ice dust. And that is why they call you the Ice Queen. She can also attack with fire, launch a windstorm, block attacks with barriers, and many, many other techniques. Needless to say, Myrtanaster is a surprisingly versatile weapon. She also uses dust to boost her semblance, which is basically her X-Men superpower. Weiss gets hers from her family line and can do a bunch of stuff with it. She can make glyphs on surfaces or in the air, each with a different color denoting its ability. Black glyphs hold things in place while white ones propel things forward. Also, by infusing glyphs with dust, she can manipulate their effects. For example, a touch of lightning dust lets her dilate time, dramatically increasing her speed. Or even better, she can use the glyphs to summon monsters to aid her in battle, Beastmaster style, like this crazy boar, a giant killer wasp, and the Armagigas which literally translates to giant armor in Latin, so fitting. Damn, just imagine how great her family could be if they all didn't hate each other. Unlimited dust, giant bodyguards you can summon any time, and they'd never be stuck with warm beer. Unfortunately, the Schnee family does suffer from some rocky relationships, with the exception of Weiss and her older sister, Winter. Wait, 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 go back. Is her dad Colonel Sanders? I guess there's a certain resemblance. AFC, KF, Schnee? No wonder they're so rich. Where did you get that chicken? What, you don't carry pocket chicken? So back on topic, Weiss has a very powerful and versatile ability, and like most semblances, it's powered by her aura. Which is like an invisible shield around her body. She's basically unkillable while it's up. Though the aura itself isn't indestructible, it can be depleted after taking a lot of damage and needs time to restore itself. Without it, she cannot use her semblance, and she's much more vulnerable. But that aura is pretty friggin' tough. It was just enough to take a full-on hit from a geyser of lava. Lava can reach temperatures up to 1200 degrees Celsius, enough to melt iron. And during a food fight of all things, she was thrown into a pillar so hard it was obliterated. Hey Wiz, I've been in a few food fights in my time, and... That shit gets intense, and that one's tame by comparison. But greatest of all, with a combination of ice and her aura, she survived riding atop a speeding train crashing through concrete. By measuring the diameter of the resulting hole and applying the values of fragmentation, this means Weiss survived an impact equal to over seven tons of TNT. But it's not just Weiss that's tough. 
Her glyphs are strong enough to catapult the Armageddon, and with her ice powers, she's knocked around a giant mech built for fighting Godzilla-sized Grimm. Compared to the height of her teammate nearby, it appears she created over 2,000 metric tons of ice. Obviously, that much ice doesn't fit into two vials of dust. She's likely using the ocean as a base to exert fusion energy and vaporization energy on the nitrogen in the air, thereby freezing it like so. At most, this would require over 900 billion joules of energy, equivalent to detonating around 230 tons of TNT. Wow! No wonder she could push that big old robot around! Plus, Weiss can also move super quick, dodging missiles and even hitting bullets out of the air! And with time dilation, she can stay nearly untouchable while taking out her opponents in the blink of an eye. Like that old saying, float like an inner tube on a lazy river and sting like your pee in the morning. Please go to a doctor. Throughout her journey, Weiss has overcome all sorts of dangers, but her most difficult task may have been the moment her father cut her out of the family, leaving her financially broke and dismissed from her birthright. Ah boo hoo, no more allowance. Still, she's powered through and made a name for herself as a huntress. With the Ruby team at her back, I think she's found the family she truly belongs to. I'm more than a name. In the early 2000s, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone in Japan who didn't know of the Kirijo Group, a global conglomerate involved in nearly every aspect of daily life. And the heiress to this impressive company was a young girl named Mitsuru Kirijo. But unknown to her, the family company was into some pretty sketchy stuff. Her grandpa started experimenting with some sort of mental world called the Mind Place. Or more officially, the Collective Unconscious, a realm connected to every living being's subconscious mind. And within the Collective Unconscious dwells shadows, fragments of human psyche which often appear as malevolent monsters. They're basically demons. Kind of. However, there's another sort more directly integrated with the minds of individual people, effectively becoming their shadow selves. So some of them are demons who want to kill you, and some of them are demons who are part of your brain? Eh, close enough. Well, Gramps tried to get the shadows for himself, but as anyone who's tried to summon demons will tell you, don't, don't do that. Trust me, it never works out. And when it does, it doesn't. Chaos Incarnate erupted. The resulting explosion from his experiment released the shadows into reality to prey on an unsuspecting populace, and unveiled the Tartarus, a citadel between worlds. The Earth was drastically changed with a new dark hour, an extra hour of time occurring at midnight. Most folks didn't notice, though. The world basically freezes in time during the dark hour, including people. So nobody's got to pick up a new 25-hour clock, because when the hour runs up, everything continues like nothing happened. It's like getting an extra hour of secret sleep. But some people are able to operate during this hour, including Mitsuru, which she decided to take full advantage of. Yeah, she felt pretty guilty about her family basically ruining everything and sending hundreds of murder monsters into the world. So she swore to fix her grandpappy's mess. And while she's certainly skilled with a rapier thanks to her time in Fencing Club, a single sword would never be enough to combat the hordes of shadows. Luckily, her first experience with the Dark Hour helped her out in this regard. That's one way to put it, she and her dad were almost murdered by spooky shadows! But this event also led to an awakening. With the threat of death itself mere seconds away, Mitsuru dug deep within and found a new weapon, her shadow self. And that's how she became a person user. Persona user. Yeah, that's what I said. Thanks to this fateful night, Mitsuru can summon a manifestation of her personality known as a persona. This was Penthesilia, who would eventually evolve into her ultimate form, Artemisia. Artie is the best non-imaginary friend you could ask for. She's got all sorts of powerful ice spells. She can heal Mitsuru's wounds. She can drain someone's energy and add it to Mitsuru's own. And she can blow people up with mega deal of, uh, It's a big purple kaboom that ignores special defenses. Anyway, and to top it all off, she's got a kinky ice whip. While Artemisia cannot really be killed, she does have her limits. When a persona is overtaxed or takes too much damage, it becomes broken and unusable for a short time. And since Artemisia is technically part of Mitsuru's mind, when the persona gets hurt, so does she. But this connection also grants Mitsuru her own set of special powers. She's physically superior to most others. 
She can also sense the locations of people and layouts of buildings through analytical clairvoyance. She's also immune to ice and the cold, so I'm not really sure why she needs that giant fur coat. Everyone needs a good fur coat, Wiz. Come on. Uh, I guess. It is a pretty nice coat. Anyway, Mitsuru wasn't going into battle alone. She gathered a team of Persona users to form the Specialized Extracurricular Execution Squad, or SEAS, which is much easier to say. The team set out to explore Tartarus, combat the shadows, and put an end to the Dark Hour, while also scoring some extra credit because it was technically an after-school club. Japanese schools are way more hardcore than ours. And with a team at her back, Mitsuru needed a tool to reliably summon Personas with. And so came the Evoker, which might be a little disturbing to some people, so fair warning. Yeah, it looks just like a gun, and that's kind of the point. The idea is to use the gun to create an extremely dramatic experience similar to how Mitsuru first evoked her own persona. Specifically, this is accomplished by aiming the thing at your face and pulling the trigger. Yeah, that's definitely not how guns are supposed to work. Questionable concepts aside, Mitsuru and her persona are an absolute terror on the battlefield. Oh, God! Did, did she just cut off that thing's dick? Yes, she did, Boomstick. And it was a goddamn cannon. Oh, the horror, but also cannon dick! Mitsuru is quick enough to dodge gunfire. Heck, another Persona user is even fast enough to outrun a bullet fired by a Magnum. Those usually have a muzzle velocity of over 360 meters per second. And Personas can move even faster. Naotos could react to and catch an arrow in milliseconds, and Mitsuru has defeated her in battle. But hey, how about that time Mitsuru and her whole team survived an explosion that totally wrecked this whole bridge? Now, uh, in my humble opinion, using my very own handcrafted munitions measurement chart, I'd say this blast falls somewhere in the range of, oh shit, we're dead. Interesting, but let's use some real science now. This is real science. I tested explosions and their real effects on real people, just like you would. I'm a real scientist now. But that's, wait, real people? Boomstick, where are the interns? Uh, I, hey, look, I got you that coat that you wanted. Ooh, thank you. Oh, it's so soft. So are the interns. But hey, uh, Wiz, there's one more math thing you gotta do. By working with another Persona user, Yukari, Mitsuru helped freeze up this giant creepy puppet monster. Well, again, taking nitrogen into account as it comprises 70% of air's makeup, we can apply its required fusion energy and vaporization energy to find this feat would need an energy output equal to 60 kilotons of TNT. Though this can't all be attributed to Mitsuru as she did have help. That's still a hell of a lot of ice. Mitsuru and Artemisia sure make a powerful pair. And even after successfully ending the Dark Hour and redeeming her family name, Mitsuru continued battling for people everywhere, one shadow at a time. This appears to be just the beginning. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, I'm all out of pocket chicken, so let's get something better with Blue Apron. By now, you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service in the US. Choose your meals each week, get the ingredients delivered to your doorstep, and whip up a meal using the easy-to-follow directions provided. With an ever-changing mix of meat, fish, and vegetarian recipes to choose from, you're all set for a tasty summer. Who has time to think up meal plans and go get the ingredients yourself anyways? Not me! This way I cut out all the boring stuff and get right to the awesome parts. It's been a huge help to both my schedule and my eating habits. There's plenty of wholesome and healthy choices to pick from. And if you're not very experienced in the kitchen, this is a great way to learn some new recipes. My favorite part is feeling like a master chef, making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip up with ease. To start making delicious, brag-worthy meals at home without the hassle, try Blue Apron. Check out this week's menu and get $60 off at blueapron.com slash battle. That's blueapron.com slash battle. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Such good form. You fight with a sense of ease. Thank you, but flattery will get you nowhere. <gasps> Fighting new 
ice. Ironic. And a waste of time. Artemisia! Valiantly, but now you'll fall by my own hand. I can do this on my own. Artemisia, no mercy. Strong enough. these coats because that was cool. Weiss was incredibly skilled. Her versatility certainly proved a challenge for Mitsuru, and she held a decent advantage in speed thanks to time dilation. Though to be fair, Mitsuru's analytical clairvoyance meant it would have been pretty difficult for Weiss to get the jump on her. Plus, Naoto's persona had to move around Mach 7 to catch that arrow in such a short amount of time, so Artemisia must be capable of similar speeds. Yeah, but slowing down time seems like an instant win move, doesn't it? In some ways, yes, but we look for who can win the most matches overall, not just a couple times out of a thousand possibilities thanks to one good move. Yeah, even though Weiss had plenty of attack options, Mitsuru's defenses were just too strong, like how she completely cancelled Weiss's ice attacks. This presented a unique problem for Weiss, who has always been fairly reliant on ice techniques. She was forced to use dust which she has less experience with. Plus, Weiss and her summons have never dealt damage anywhere close to that oh shit we're dead explosion that Mitsuru survived. By taking the diameter of the blast here and comparing it to real life nukes, and considering how far Mitsuru was from the center of it, she took a hit worth over 21 tons of TNT. Definitely higher than Weiss's 7 ton train feet. Frankly, Mitsuru's survivability and power output outclassed Weiss. Even if we cut her major ice feet in half since she was aided by Yukari, Mitsuru still output 130 times more energy than Weiss when she attacked that mech. But numbers aren't everything, right? Sure, there's always a new way to look at things. For instance, Weiss's arsenal was limited by her aura and dust supply, while Mitsuru had no such constraint on her own powers. It takes a long time to restore aura, and remember, when a persona gets broken, it can just come back a few seconds later. Which was extremely useful, as Artemisia could heal Mitsuru at any time, undoing whatever progress Weiss had made. Oh man, what an ice cold move! While Weiss's speed and versatility put up a good fight, Mitsuru's greater defense, raw power, and more reliable arsenal proved too much for the Huntress. She had no chance. The winner is Mitsuru Kirijo.
Hey, thanks for watching Death Battle. Don't go away just yet. We're about to announce the next fight. And if you haven't seen the latest episode of our podcast, The Death Battle Cast, you can click it right there.